Will Shaw, everyone. Here's a video about adding onto Laudon, um, and just some background about Laudon and how it works, and some examples of when people have tried to make translations and needed new words and stuff like that. So, um, if you've looked into Laudon and you specifically if you've tried to translate anything, you might have noticed that there are a lot of words missing from the dictionary. The dictionary has quite a few entries, but no matter what you try to translate, I think that you'll always come up with something that you're not able to find a word for, so you might have to derive a word for it. Um, so for example, just a really simple example, when I was translating an Aesop fable, there's no entry in the dictionary for lion, there is for cat, so for my translation in particular, I translated it as sun cat, or rocheru. Um, in my translation, because I was thinking like the mane looks like a sun. I tried a few different things, um, but it just came up with that one because that's kind of just how I visualize the lion, I guess. That's kind of how I look at the mane. Of course, that doesn't work as well for the lionesses, but maybe that can be a different word as well. Um, and then in my translation, I just added translation notes at the end. But um, what rules are there, if any, about modifying Laudon? So I went through some of the resources up on the laudonlanguage.org website, and I just wanted to highlight some stuff. So first, about the original construction of Laudon. Um, why was it created? Um, the four s notes that she lists on the FAQ page. One, she was writing the novels, the native tongue novels, and um, the characters in there were creating a language, so she decided to build one herself to gain insight on how that might work, and also to make sure she didn't to reduce errors about linguistics of this language in the novel. She also wanted to try to figure out how to create a language that expresses the perceptions of women, um, So, and she also makes a statement that she's specifically talking about English-speaking women and American English because um, I believe she was only fluent in English and Navajo. Um, so, you know, sometimes I see people posting about, like, what about these other languages? Well, she really only had a, this frame of reference. And also, um, when she gave talks at conventions and such, I suppose, people would ask um, if women aren't satisfied with the language they have, why don't they come up with the language of their own? And so that was another motivation for her. And you can also see my WizCon video where I just read through kind of that talk she gave that was kind of like the precursor to her starting Laudon. So in the process of creating the original Laudon dictionary, well, this is the second edition, but they're kind of rare, kind of expensive now, um, but she published this and um, it has a little bit of information about it in there too, but there's also an excerpt of that on the lawdownlanguage.org website. But when she was constructing the language, she had a few goals in mind. She wanted it to be as easy to pronounce as possible, and its pronunciation as easy to understand as possible. If you've looked at Tokipona, this is kind of also a, a goal there. And both languages use um, consonant vowel, vowel switching off to kind of make that work. Um, so with Laudon, her structure to do that, her solution to do that to make it easy to pronounce is, you know, you don't have consonant clusters and you don't have vowel clusters. Um, it'll be consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, blah, 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 and so on. Another goal she had for Laudon was to make it easy to figure out what a particular word meant just by looking at it. So she did this by making it out of building blocks. So she would come up with some core words and then suffixes and stuff, and you can put them together and make new words. So an example, um, the word for B is jo mid. So the word jo is the word sound. Mid is the word for creature. And so putting them together made the word B. So first she began by creating some basic vocabulary before working on any grammar. Um, and I thought it was interesting when she pointed out why she chose a couple of words. So, for example, the word for bridge is Odo, like um, 
up, rising, and then falling type of tone. And she just used this because in her mind it makes the shape of a bridge. Um, for cat, she chose rule, um, so not using the mid suffix, she made this as one of the core words, because it kind of sounds to her like the um, way a cat purrs, like, I don't know, rule, 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 I don't know, <laughs> it's kind of hard to verbally make that sound with my mouth. Um, but then for other words, she just kind of came up with things that might be easy to pronounce, to say. Um, Anna for food, Inna for sleep, and so on. And some of the rules of putting these um, sounds together in Laudan, you're not allowed to have two identical vowel sounds in a row, or um, two consonant sounds in a row. You can have kind of a rising and falling tone for, for vowels, so if you have an O followed by an accented O, that's okay, or an accented O followed by an uh, unaccented O, that's also okay, but you couldn't have just O and O together. So when you're building words, um, in the way we were talking about before, of course, there'd be cases where one word ends with a vowel and one begins with a vowel or with consonants, and so you have to break up that um, those neighboring vowel sounds or consonant sounds. So if you have two vowels stuck together, you can break them up with the H sound. If you have two consonants stuck together, you can break them up with the E sound. So for example, with the word dome to remember, you can combine it with mid for creature to mean elephant, and but together you can't combine those two M's together. You can either add the little M in the, or sorry, you can add the little E in the middle, so domamid, to make it um, elephant, or what she did, um, another example of what you can do if you have two consonants that are identical to each other, next to each other, is you can drop one of them. So instead of doing domamid, she changed it to domid for elephant. So that was getting rid of one of these M's and then just sticking them together. Some other sound rules are that the Y, W, H, and R sounds cannot be used as final consonants, and there are some instances of words that have the BR sounds together, which was by accident, but she didn't remove it. You can just kind of treat that as an exception to the rule. Um, you know, once something's in language, it's used in language and kind of evolves from there, I guess. So on modifying Laudan, she was pretty clear that um, you can't own a language. She could perhaps publish the original grammar and um, dictionary, but she had no intention of really policing it. Um, unless, I think she said, like, if a media mogul wanted to do something with it, she would have tried to block it. But in general, to use Laudan, there, you know, she wants people to use Laudan. She didn't want to restrict that. So um, she didn't really think of a language as something you would be able to own. And then adding on to Laudan, she you know, is if, if it follows the sound system, then fine. Um, if you're trying to add new grammar rules and stuff, then you end up with a different language than Laudan itself. So she mentions how you have Esperanto reformed. It's no longer original Esperanto because you've changed the grammar around. So I think she makes the distinction of changing the grammar makes it a different language, but you can also add new words to the language and it will still be Laudan. So now some examples of trying to add to the Laudan vocabulary or translate things. Um, I just thought these brought up some interesting discussions, so I thought I would highlight them. So mostly when you're first starting out and you want to translate something or come up with a word for something, the easiest way to go about it is by trying to use building blocks with the core words, um, but that can still be difficult because it is a limited dictionary. So here, um, in the Laudan Club website, let's see, Tamaris, Tamaris Knox posted a really interesting blog post here, um, and I've just put in some excerpts that I thought was interesting. So the intention was to translate the phrase, come and see the violence inherent in the system, and some quotes from the blog post are, in the lexicon there is no word for violence, and there also isn't a neat antonym for it can be easily negated with the raw negation. Um, incidentally, there's also no word for inherent or system for that matter. And then the blog post goes on to say, 
the interesting thing when you end up coming with new words or when you have to translate around a lexical gap is that you almost inevitably have to make value judgments about the thing you're trying to make. So especially in something like Laudan, where the original intent is to experiment to see if providing a language for women to use would affect a change in the culture, is it simply a lexical gap or was it intentional? So then some of the words that were derived here were Dora Shehele to cause torment to an intolerable degree. So they said, this was my solution for violence, and this is really the point where the translation wildly diverges from a word-for-word -word translation into trying to match concepts. I made two choices that might be of interest here. First, I chose to use Rashe, torment, over either Uya or Heye, pain. The second was the choice to not embed the pejorative, and this one is hard to pronounce, it's like, or something in the word. Um, and then the word Rashinadal, Rashinadal, I can never make that sound, that's the hard sound. <laughs> Rashinadal, something like that. Um, bureaucracy, not a network, pejorative. So despite the fact that bureaucracy is coined in opposition to the idea of a network, and thus has a certain negative connotation to it, I considered it generally neutral in nature, and so decided to further underline the oppressive nature of the system in this statement by adding the pejorative, that weird hissing sound. <laughs> so that was a pretty interesting blog post. In the old version of the forums, um, there was some discussion about it, and I believe it was William Annis who posted this, and I just wanted to kind of um, read it off for posterity because it can be hard to find um, the post. I have the post archived kind of um, roughly in the new message board, but it was posted on the old message board and that thing got overran by spam, so I'm just reading it here. So. This is a very difficult problem. Not only are surprisingly basic words sometimes nowhere to be found, for example, how would you say put or to place, apart from do wad, um, where's the base? To cause to verb occur, and what is wad? To sit, to cause to sit. So how would you even say place except for to cause something to to sit somewhere. But there wasn't a systematic exploration of derivational morphology. That is, how do you do things like turn an adjective hot into a noun heat and so on. But close inspection of the Laudan vocabulary can suggest some models apart from compounds which of course are very heavily used. For example, we have men, sugar, leaning to menen for sweet and for salt and salty which suggests that we can use on to derive adjectives of characteristics from nouns. Another suggestive one is nuthul, orphan, from thul, parent. Although nu by itself means here, as a prefix it can be a privative. Combine this with on, and we have the equivalent of less, the less suffix here in English. For example, Nuloshan, moneyless or penniless, or where where losh means money, or nudalithan, bald or hairless. There are other subtle possibilities here waiting for explication, uh, or at least the enthusiasm to take up analogies and run with them. So I took a different approach to this puzzler than you did. One of my motivations was to explore polysemy. That is, the ability of many words to shade into several meanings. So for violence, I decided just to use dorado. That's defined as to dominate, but we know that verb stems can also be used as bare action nouns. So, domination. For the system, this is much trickier. My starting point is the interesting pair me with for city and with person. There's no obvious compound here, so I take me to refer to some sort of formal societal grouping, cluster, or arrangement, or custom. There's not a lot to go on. Step two requires a little grice? Grease, maybe? <laughs> oh, I don't I don't know that word. So one of the Gricean maxims of communication 
is that you don't say things that are irrelevant to people. Seeing several world words in the dictionary which use the suffix tham for circle, referring to people gathered together for some purpose, I decided to glom together shide to be together with tham. But if thumb already encodes the idea of together for a purpose, then shide is a bit redundant. Here I want to convey that the circle is doing nothing more than being around each other. I rely on Gricean implication to note that if thumb is already if thumb already means together, then I'm making some special point by using shide too. Finally, I end up with me shide thom, the system, by which I mean some conglomeration of people who are together in some civic way, they're not necessarily for any pr particular purpose beyond the fact that they happen to be there. I wanted to come up with an idea for the system which doesn't imply necessarily that everyone involved is actively enforcing whatever this e the system is, but that the system is comprehensive and social, um, and so on. So that's in the um, message board. Here is kind of where I archived it from the original post, and I think I have a link to the original post as well in the old board, if this link even works. Yeah. So that's up there, and that's pretty interesting. Another one, um, there's the old live journal community, and I wanted to look at the suggestions here from Amberwin. So somebody had posted um, a bunch of suggestions for new words. So one of them, they had suggested that me should be a prefix for a permanent place where many live, deriving from me with for city. And Amberwin said, I always perceived the etymology of me with, town or city, as me from leaf and with from person. It's a bit poetic perhaps, but leaves are a great metaphor for many and all collected or connected. I'd object to me as a prefix being used for permanent dwelling place of many, seems only humans and insects really form permanent dwellings for many of their kind. Mejub might be an appropriate formation for hive, hive, but I don't think we need to formalize me as a prefix for it to be created. Its etymology would be like me with the leaf plus I insect, though that might be confusing if a particular insect that used leaf camouflage were under discussion. So those are just some interesting discussions about um, people trying to come up with words and the theory around that. So I don't really have any hard and fast rules. Um, my suggestion is just to, whenever you're making a work, add some translation notes. Because I know when I try to go backwards from Laud on to English to try to read something, it can be hard to figure out what the building blocks even were sometimes. Um, and if you're making up words, then that's going to be even harder. So. Um, add some translation notes or just, you know, um, kind of a addendum at the end to explain how you came up with certain words. And additionally, it might be useful to discuss word changes in a community. At the moment, there isn't really an active community that I know of. There's the old live journal community that you can kind of sift through, but they don't post much at all. Um, I've created a message board at the Laudon.club website. We can use that, um, which I just, like, I have the old message board backed up, but it was covered in spam, and I set up a PHPBB message board so I can have better control of it, but I'm the only person currently on there. But it's there if you want to have some discussions on deriving words. There are also some chat rooms on Telegram, and there's a Facebook group, and um, there's some postings on Tumblr, Tumblr from time to time. So the message board is just at laudonclub.community. There are some telegram channels. I don't know if I can join these. So there are some telegram telegram channels here, and you can talk about Laudon in there. There's the live journal community and the Facebook group here. There's also um, the subreddit, but again, there's not a lot of activity around lot on right now. Um, I know for me personally, I get really busy, so it's kind of comes and goes. I don't always have time to um, do stuff with conlangs, which is which is a shame. Um, but that's you know probably the reason for a lot of inactivity around it. That's why I decided I wanted to um, create a bunch of videos ahead of time and queue them up and 
have stuff be posted over the next few months. So anyway, here's some links to things you might look into. Um, if you have any thoughts, leave some comments. If you have questions on what we might use to translate a specific word, I might have time to look into that. Um, otherwise, I've just been trying to either translate some short stories like Aesop's fables or other things and putting them out there just to kind of hear, hear some reading material and so on. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.